Uh, hello everybody, welcome to our lecture tonight. I am Todd Robbins, a uh, physical therapist here at uh, Robbins Rehabilitation. And tonight we are going to be talking about uh, the Paleo Solution. Uh, it's a book by uh, Rob Wolf. There's a lot of other information in different books that uh, we can talk about too. But the uh, lecture focuses on Rob's book. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of interesting information um, and uh, very informal. We can ask some questions in the middle and uh, keep talking about that and just have a discussion on it. So. We will start up. Uh, the paleo solution has been called the original uh, human diet. So, does anyone know what uh, paleo eating is, or paleo living is? Hunter gatherer. Hunter gatherer. Yes, very, very good. So, uh, like uh, cavemen. So, uh, when we take a look at um, our uh, our cavemen here, so this is a common <laughs> we see online here. You'll see the normal uh, progression. We have these on some wonderful T-shirts. Uh, so you go from uh, the uh, knuckle-dragging uh, ape up to the human, and then we've got uh, our guy with the big uh, probably Slurpee or a pup from uh, Burger King or something like that. And uh, obviously he's overweight, so uh, we know that there's an obesity problem in the United States. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about that, kind of like, what happened to us? Uh, we went this direction, this guy looks pretty fit, and the, the next guy, uh, not so much. Uh, just some statistics on obesity, I'm sure a lot of people know obesity is on the rise. Uh, you can, this is kind of broken down in different sections, but everyone from small children are getting heavier up to adults, and you can see it's a pretty dramatic rise. In the last, like here's like 1988 right in here, and after that it's kind of going dramatically upward. Um, but we all kind of know that, and we want to find out and talk a little bit about why that's happening. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to learn today, just a brief overview, a uh, brief history on evolution uh, and uh, agriculture. Um, uh, brief and broad uh, chemistry lesson. A uh, lesson on what is a grain, uh, brief history on U.S. nutrition in the last century, um, stress and cortisol, uh, ancestral fitness, and uh, how to uh, go paleo. Uh, so uh, we're going to be, I'm going to go through this stuff you know, pretty quickly and we have a discussion afterwards. All the stuff is going in much greater detail in the book, but uh, you guys can take a look at the book if you want to too. Um, so history lesson on evolution. Uh, evolution. So, Genetics are almost identical to um, our uh, ancestors from about 200,000 uh, uh, to 100,000 years ago. So the guys uh, here uh, uh, who were uh, killing animals, the cavemen type people, you know, 100 to 200,000 years ago, pretty much our genetics are pretty much the same. Uh, so it hasn't been a whole lot of change and so for that reason we wouldn't think there would be a whole lot of change in um, our digestion, how we process food and how we use our bodies. So. Um, where are we now? Uh, in the last 10,000 years is when things started to change as far as what we ate in agriculture. Uh, we've moved from a, a nutrient-dense, uh, protein-rich diet uh, that was varied and changed with location and the seasons and to a diet that depends on crops. So our ancestors used to live in different parts of you know, the, the, the land when it got colder, when it got warmer, they'd move around a lot. Um, different fruits and, um, and foods were in season at certain times and vegetables. So they had a much more varied diet, um, and now we can get anything we want at the grocery store at any time, uh, and it's a few crops that don't have a whole lot of nutritional value to them. Um, you know, these crops um, have a fraction of the vitamins and that uh, were found uh, back then in the foods that they ate, and even if you take a look at foods that are in your grocery store now, uh, the amount of actual nutrients in them are different than what the foods, what, than what was in them even like 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, there's just not as much nutritional value in the foods that are in your local grocery store now. Um, so we've gone from our caveman here, he has, he's just like us, he's a caveman, but now we have the same kind of like, you know, genetic code and everything, but we're going to McDonald's and Burger King. So, uh, talk a little bit about chemistry uh, and digestion. Uh, who here took chemistry in school? Who loved chemistry? All right, we've got a couple of chemistry lovers here. I was not a lover of chemistry. I started reading uh, Rob's book here, and uh, I was on vacation, and I'm reading it, and I would immediately fall asleep. It was, uh, it was very, very tough to get through. There's a lot of meaty chemistry stuff in there. Um, it, it's interesting, but uh, it's still tough to get through. So we're going to give an overview of that. It goes in much more detail uh, in, in his book. So if you really love that stuff, you can take a look at it um, and get more information from that. So changing our basic diet so quickly compared to evolution has created a lot of health issues. So you know, like we were talking about, we're seeing those guys from you know, a long, long time ago, but in the last 10,000 years, even more recently, we've really dramatically changed um, the food that we eat. Um, and digestion changes along with that. Uh, what I found out in the book that I've forgotten from college is 
that just has a lot to do with hormones and how hormones interact with the, the foods that you eat and how they kind of work with your body. So I learned a lot about that. We'll talk about a couple of hormones tonight. Um, so Science Geek Talk uh, is, tells us that you know, by the time things are absorbed through the uh, intestinal line, it's where the, you know, really the heavy part of the digestion starts to occur. Um, you know, the, uh, the hormone peptide uh, uh, YY or PYY is, uh, is released and that's a real player in you know, telling you that your body is full. Okay? Um, so, and it's, it directly uh, improves the, uh, leptin sensitivity. So leptin is another word, like kind of a science word. Leptin tells our body how much, yeah, it's a science word, how much fuel we have in storage and when we are full. Um, so, uh, you know, your, your, your body sends you a message when you are full, like, oh, you should stop eating food. But this message is becoming confused, uh, and, you know, people that, and, and because of the different things that people eat now, um, and, you know, we're, we're not really stopping eating, maybe when we should. Uh, peptide YY is a hormone that tries to tell us when to stop eating, and uh, protein releases a lot of this. So when you eat meats, uh, typically you'll eat less meat and feel more full. Uh, vegetables um, re uh, uh, or fats rather release slightly less, and carbs the least. So it makes sense. If I'm eating a lot of carbohydrates, uh, I'm not getting a lot of release of this hormone, and you know my, the the hormone is not telling my body that I am full. So I'll tend to eat more, or I'll be more hungry like shortly after that meal. Um, and you know, so this is why they talk about different foods to eat. Protein is big, fats are big, vegetables are big, carbohydrates not so much. So, uh, we'll talk a little bit about hyperinsulinism, another big science word. Uh, insulin is a hormone that's critical in regulating blood sugar, body fat, and aging. So, probably everyone's heard of insulin. Like, insulin related to what? When you hear insulin, what do you think? Diabetes. Diabetes, right? So, there's type 1 and type 2. Um, you know, some people are, you know, like, can't use insulin, some people don't have enough insulin. Uh, but that's typically where you, where you hear that, and when you talk about diabetes, you know, type 2 diabetes is a very common thing for people that are overweight to have. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and to live long, look good, and uh, keep our marbles. We'd like to uh, do a good job of keeping our insulin levels low. Um, but you know, controlling carbs and certain lifestyle factors will help us with that. Uh, but as Rob talks about in his book, with all the chemistry, carbohydrates uh, will uh, affect your, your insulin levels uh, in a negative way. Insulin uh, is a nutrient storage hormone, and it has a lot to do with fat storage and obesity, like we talked about. Uh, you know, people with insulin problems and type 2 diabetes uh, tend to be overweight, um, so insulin is a hormone that has a lot to do with that. Okay, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about the evil grain. The uh, grain we have a diagram of here, this one's in the book, um, and uh, it was, this was interesting stuff that I didn't really uh, think about a lot when I was reading the book. Um, so what is, what, what is this little grain thing here? What, like, what is that? A wheat kernel. Yeah, it is. It's a wheat kernel. What's, what's, it, what's it really designed to do? Like the wheat in the field, they turn into food, that little kernel thing, what's it, what is it? It's an egg. It's a, thing. It's a little baby plant, right? So, like, it wasn't necessarily designed maybe to, like, people to eat in volume or anything like that, but it, it falls off, blows away, and what's it supposed to do? Reproduce. Yeah. Grow another little baby plant, and wheat grows just like uh, anything else. Very good. And uh, so, but now we've decided to mass produce this and turn this into food, and I never really thought about it like that, um, you know, going through all your science and stuff like that, with plants, how they reproduce and everything, but this is the stuff that we're eating. So, it's made up of endosperm. Uh, which is starch with a little bit of protein. So that's the big part of it, makes up 83% of it out here. And it's fuel for that growing embryo, this little baby plant that wants to grow up and be a real plant. Um, there's the bran, it's the outer covering that has vitamins, minerals, and proteins um, designed to um, prevent the eating of the baby plant. So we all know kind of, if, if you go know through science, like every, every organism, plants and animals are all built with defense mechanisms. And there's certain things out there to prevent, you know, animals from eating this, humans from eating this. So this, this outer covering, the bran, is really a defense mechanism to stop you from, you know, eating it. In other words, like, an animal would eat it, and then it wouldn't feel good after eating it, and then, like, well, hopefully it wouldn't try and eat it again. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard for us to digest. That, that outer covering, the bran, makes it hard for us to digest grain. And the germ is the actual reproductive portion down here, where the, uh, where the embryo sits. 
Um, but again, I never really thought about it like that. The green is like a little baby plant, and it's trying to survive, blow in the wind, and go, you know, plant itself somewhere. But it has a lot to do with, you know, why it's hard for us to digest this stuff. Uh, the destructive grain. Uh, so, this is, again, the issue where it deals with us when we're eating grains and why it's an issue for us. Uh, grains contain a protein called lectin, which is, don't confuse it with uh, previously leptin that we had. Uh, it's been shown to create all sorts of recognition issues, autoimmune diseases, uh, like hormone issues that we're talking about that has to do with digestion. It causes damage to the gut wall, and you know, anything that causes damage to the gut wall predisposes someone to autoimmunity. Uh, chemical sensitivities and allergies, so I think we can agree all those are bad things. And this, you know, the grain is what's causing that, and you know, everyone's sensitive at different levels to it, but it causes a lot of problems. Uh, so now we'll talk a little about Ansel Keys and uh, fat propaganda. So Ansel Keys was a guy that um, came out with a study in the early 1950s called the Seven Country Study. Um, he submitted that and it had a lot to do with, with fat. This was right after World War II and um, it was a study that took a look at, you know, but even at that time people were kind of getting a little bit heavier and he wanted to take a look at why that was happening. So, you know, we kind of, he, he thought, um, which makes sense and really even made sense to me until I started reading some of this stuff. Uh, if you eat more fat, you should get fatter, right? That makes sense to most people. You know, if I eat a lot of fatty foods, that fat will stick to me and then I'll, I'll, I'll be fat. So that was kind of his theory. So he took a look at a bunch of different countries and seven made it to his study. Um, and you know, in, from the information he got from that, that was the conclusion that he drew. Apparently he really wanted to draw this conclusion. Uh, it appeared to show that you know, again, the more, the more uh, fat that uh, a country's population ate, uh, the fatter the, um, the population became and the higher, at higher risk they were for heart attack or cardiovascular disease. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it should have been a 22 country study. He kind of threw out the countries in his study that you know, didn't show that conclusion. Um, so the real conclusion of the study should have been, you know, some countries eat a lot of fat and have heart disease, some countries you know, don't eat a lot of fat and have, and have heart disease and there's no real strong correlation between the amount of intake of fat that your population has and the amount of cardiovascular disease that that country is going to have. Uh, but he threw those out, his study looked really good and uh, his, his hypothesis came to a conclusion and he had the data to, uh, to, to prove it. Uh, he was featured on the cover of Time magazine and since then, you know, a lot of gullible Americans, myself included, Thought fat in the diet equals fat people equals heart disease. Um, so that's you know after that I, I mean I, I remember like going to the grocery store and I was like it's like like they started doing low fat like everything is low fat and there's no fat in it. So if you eat this and there's no fat in it then you won't get fat so you should buy everything that's low fat. Um, they still do that stuff they have not like have like sugar free and all sorts of different things but that was probably one of the first things that you saw at the grocery store that was different in packaging and things is that. This says lower fat, and you know, so you will eat this, and you'll be less fat than if you ate the full fat stuff. Uh, here's his picture on Time Magazine. Um, so again, he made this study that wasn't a very good study. Uh, it, it looked good on paper, but he didn't include all the countries in it. He's on the cover of Time Magazine in the 1950s, which is a bit, still a big deal today. But you put it on the cover of Time Magazine, everyone sees that. He says, if you eat a lot of fat, you're going to get fat. We probably shouldn't be eating a lot of fat. So that's kind of where you know the confusion with with fat you know kind of started. Um, so here is the fatty truth. It's not the fat that you eat that really causes issues. It's it's interaction with with carbohydrates. And again, there's a ton of chemistry in the book if you want to read that that's, that that talks about that. But that was Rob Wolf's conclusion. Uh, fats are complicated, uh, but ideally you should get you know your fat from animals. Um, ideally grass-fed uh, beef or wild-caught salmon, things that you know, animals that aren't fed with grains. Uh, for the same type of issues that we're talking about with humans, you know, the animal digestion is similar to human digestion, but what do they feed the cows out in the Midwest? Grain. Grain. Yeah. What else do they feed them? Corn. 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 Okay. 